do a lot of core myself because the training yourself, you kind of get it. I think it's one of those things you can get uh, without necessarily isolating it by itself. Um, but when I do try to do just core exercises, um, I'm at a home gym. So this will be for people who are at home. Uh, I have a few different variations that I'll give to you that I think are kind of good. And then you can figure out which works best for you. But the concept's the same. Typically what I try to do is do something that's gonna have my core already engaged, already locked. So any sort of like a plank position where I'm ready sort of flexing my core muscles. And then I try sure. to move forth from that position. So for example, what I'm talking about, if you do have a place where you have some sort of bars, this would be kind of step one. If you do have bars, big bars or anything you can use, you can use two chairs. Um, what I like to do is I try to get in a, a push-up position from here. And so this is going to activate my stomach. I make sure my stomach is tight and I come through and put my feet out. Then I come back and put my foot in the back here. So I do that. And so what again, like over there. <laughs> that make sure that you're moving your core while your core is already um, contracting. And yeah. then you get a little bit more advanced, you can do it with smaller ones. Um, this just takes a little bit more core strength, but it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> if you're not doing those things and you want to do something that's still very good on a mat, what I like to do is I like to just keep my. Um, a lot of people like to do crunches. I like to do crunches very slow. Sometimes I'll put my arms out, and what I like to do is just roll up, contracting the stomach. Roll all the way up. Hold it. And roll back down. Roll your stomach all the way up. Hold it. And roll back down. So those are kind of my three main ones. If I'm just trying to isolate the stomach by itself. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially that roll up. I'm yeah, just find a bit. Make sure you don't push. Don't use your uh, shoulders and pull up. Just roll your just stomach. Roll. Keep it contracted all the way up. Hold it when you get to the top. Yeah. Ooh. Yo, I, I want right. to do that little business move yeah. right So, there. yo, Dave. So, so Dave, Dave, and folks at home. Um, the uh, I'm using dumbbells. I could do that second variation that Takuma showed us, where you start here and you go through. I just need to get a grip on the side of the dumbbell, but I'm actually using dumbbells to do that. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to use these uh these uh benches that I have at my disposal. Ooh, I like that, Takuma. Well, yeah, yeah, I like that. So um so, so Takuma, like um are you I mean are you nuts? <laughs> like what have you always been like just a little off? Like you like to get punched in the face and like people no. trying to choke you out? Like you like to put yourself in in dangerous positions, you like to swim with sharks when they ain't feed yet? Like what's wrong with you, bro? Like what where'd you come from? Like you know what I mean? Like what what no. what, what do you think? Is there anything in your history that made you want to train um and and, and fight? Um, no, not really. I mean, there is a, obviously, you know, I, I did, I like most people that grew up kind of, you know, you got in some fights when you were younger, right? And one of them, big impression on me, I, I was fighting one of my friends, one of my best friends, matter of fact, um, and he wrestled his whole life. And I didn't know what was going on when I decided that we were going to get in the fight, but basically he double-legged me, jumped, mounted me, and held me down and was like talking to me. And I remember oh, wow. how I was like, I am so powerless here. You know, like there's nothing I can do. There's no way I can punch him. There's nothing I can do. So that always stuck in my mind. Um, and when wow. I got, I had my oldest daughter, Sari Ann, uh, my wife was pregnant. I needed to do something where I can get a workout. And I wanted to actually get into wrestling, but there's no adult wrestling. So, uh -huh. I, Looked up what was another grappling. I think I just put it in the in, on the internet on Google, and there was this gym that came and did grappling, which was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And so I was like, let me go check them out. And once I went to the gym, just the, they were very self defense focused. They were doing. All, I see all these people doing rolling around, grabbing people, twisting their arms, and everyone was tapping, and then people standing up. And I was like, man, this is kind of like interesting. This is totally foreign for me. Um, and so I went in there and just started training. And then, you know, if you have a personality like I do and you kind of do everything, you, you know, you want to get more and more and more, I started doing one thing, the next thing, the other thing. And then you're like, I spent all this time doing it. Let me just take one fight and see if this stuff really works. And yeah. then you 
booked, you know? So it was never like a plan of mine to be an MMA fighter. I started when I was 28 and I'm not only going to claim like I'm a big MMA fighter. I did it for seven or eight years, but it was never like, I was never trying to get to the UFC. It was more just a way to challenge myself and to keep yeah. going and see what I get with the arts. And then yeah. you know, I, that chapter passed. Um, but yeah, man, it was just, it was just for fun. And, and again, it's, it's easy, like in Taekwondo or karate and all these sort of things, it's always easy to say this stuff works when the other person is doing the exact same thing you're doing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, mm. right. Well, against mm. the uh, karate guy. Taekwondo works well. But this was sort of a thing where it was like, well, let me see if somebody wants to do whatever they want to do. Well, what I'm learning, does this stuff really, really work? And so right. I tried it out so, and kind of, and just, it, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what was, for you. Go ahead, son. Okay. Real quick, real quick. How do you handle? Uh, so you said you were doing it for fun, right? But I know yeah. you. You know there was a, there was a competitive edge to you. I mean, yeah. when you were doing it, how do you handle defeat? And you know, like how do you, you know, putting all that work into, you know, getting into fighting shape, and then you know, getting to that point, and then you know, kind of, you know, not really, you know, not really following through. How do you deal with that? Uh, so that's a great question. I think that is probably the best thing about martial arts. Um, just in sing and because it's, there's nobody else there but you, right? So you don't have a teammate that you can say, man, you messed, you really can't blame them. <laughs> they try to keep you safe, you know, they're trying to pull somebody off you. So there's nobody you can blame for a loss but yourself. And I think you learn really early on, well, I'll start off with saying this, you learn very early on how to lose. You'll never be good at a martial art if you do not know how to lose. Because if you're going to a gym mm. and you're training against other people, you're going to be training against people who are better than you or you're never going to get better. So you you go and get beat up all the time. <laughs> so getting beat up yeah. in front of everybody sucks, but it's like you're used to not losing. You know what I mean? Um, now, but dealing with the loss is something that is very, very difficult to do because, you, like you said, you put your all energy, you train for three months, you diet, you do all this stuff. And then now you have all your friends and all your family and all these people in the crowd, and then you lose. And you're like, man, I can't believe it. You know, how do, how do I do? But reality, that's life, right? You learn that you, you, all you can do is your best. And you learn to compete with yourself rather than compete with others. And that was the biggest mm. lesson. Like, I, all I want to do is try to be the best I can be. And if I, I made sure I didn't uh, cut any corners, making it do any shortcuts, then the, the results are going to be whatever they are. I can't, all I can do is put myself in the best chance to win, put myself in the best shape to win. And that was how I viewed it. I, as long as I knew that I wasn't cutting any corners, I didn't care how it, it still stung, but I could deal with it. I could cope with it. I couldn't okay. cope with me going out there in front of everybody knowing, man, I didn't really train that hard. I didn't really put in the miles. I didn't really do that stuff. Cause then I'm like, man, I just cheated myself. So you just learn to speak with yourself. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. The loss is not, it's like, what can I do? I put my cards out there. I did the best I can do. And that's, it is what it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's that's dope, the best man. motivational message Ooh. I've heard in a long time, bro. Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. Bro. Amazing, that's amazing. Amazing, man. So, we're, so, so when you, when we talk about training, man, where are you, where are you now? Are you, uh, do you, I mean, what does your training resume, regimen look like now? Does it still look like, um, you know, are you still training jujitsu and all these different other things? So, uh, yes and no. So, you know, as you know, Sarah, you know, uh, Jared, I have a daughter who has a, is immunocompromised. She has an issue. So uh, with this whole COVID thing, I had to be really careful with her and me. I had to move a little. So I'm not going into gyms right now, like rolling with people or sweating all over me and things like that. But yeah. I, because I've been for a long time, um, I have a lot of friends that do martial arts that have been doing this for 10 plus years. So We've been able to kind of do our own thing and kind of like, you know, they have gyms at home and I can train with three, four, five at a time. I can bring people here. We can train striking and do sparring. So I kind of just had to make it work for, for what I need to do and to keep us as safe. So I'm not in gyms, but yeah, I'm still training. And then when yeah. I don't have to train, like if I can't find somebody to train with or it's one of those days that we're not training martial arts, I can do, I can work out in the gym. I can go on a run. I always just try to stay active, all that stuff it all adds up, you know what I mean? So, right. And it's also keeps it, keeps it fresh for me. So one day I may be doing jujitsu, next day I may be running five miles, the next day I may lift weights, the next day I may be spar and I just try to keep it going. But I, my, to my whole thing is I just need to do something at least five days a week. So that's kind of the so way. Enough, so uh, in, in other words, 
where he is right now. In other words, he could beat the motherfucker's ass. <laughs> I mean, come on now. You don't forget that shit. Another thing that I wanted to say, man, I wanted to ask, man. So, like, you know, in, in, in my travels, man, you know, I'm a military vet, man. And, you know, just talking to a lot of guys, you know, you see a dude be like, man, you know, that dude look like you whip your ass or that dude will whip my ass. You know, like, people just kind of, like, they're self-defeating, right? You see a person like, you know, that dude, that's a big dude, man. You, you fuck me up. I've never had that mentality, man. I think I can beat everybody, you know what I mean? So, but but how does that, you know, like, I, I, and the thing is, I'm only, like, 5'9", you know, I'm a small guy, so, like, I've always had a, an edge, a chip on my shoulder, you know, when it came to that, you know, and it just made me that much tougher. Like, what do you guys do, like, when you kind of, like, you know, of course you guys watch footage of guys, you know, your opponent or whatever have you, and you kind of, like, try to exploit their weaknesses. But, I mean, clearly there's something that goes on in your mind that says, man, you know, this guy is no joke. And you know what I mean? He's he's very skilled. And, and, and how do you guys psych yourself up to really kind of like, you know, uh, to, to clear your head of all that, I guess, negativity, self-negativity, really, to, mm-hmm. to you know, when you're, you're facing somebody that may be, that may outclass you, you know what I mean? How do you go about doing that? <sighs> that is tough, man. You're asking, some, you're asking the real questions, right? It's very hard. It's very, very hard because, especially for like me, it was very hard because I was, I started when I was 28, which is very, very old for mm. any sort of martial arts, right? And as you started winning and winning, you're going against people who are better and better, and better who are younger than you are, who are doing this as they're living. They, they're instructors at their martial art gyms and I'm working a nine to five or, you know what I mean? And then trying to do right. this in the or before work. So you always feel like you're playing catch up. Always felt like, damn, this guy I'm, I'm fighting is bigger, better, has more time, he's more dedicated, whatever, you know. And so, dealing with that negativity is like at the battle, right? And so, I think it, it feels in the beginning. This is how it worked for me, and I, everybody is different. In the beginning of the camp, it, it filled my me wanting to train harder because I was like, man, this guy's going to beat me, and I'm have all my friends. And I got to sell all these tickets, and everyone's going to be. I want to. I don't want him to beat me and embarrass me in front of my friend. Last thing I want is my wife to be in the crowd and some dude knock me out. You know? <laughs> right, you know? right, right. So it starts to feel you, but then feel your uh, training and your motivation. But then towards the end, you realize that it's counterproductive to start thinking mm. I is better than you. And you got to go into the fight at your King Kong. You're like, I, you have to believe in yourself. Otherwise, you're ready to. If you don't think you can win, you should not step in there. Basically, if you don't think you can win. So, the switch is saying, man, I, I train now. I put in the time. I, I you know, whatever. And, and if you have good coaches, they'll also give you positive reinforcement. Man, you did well, did well in sparring, whatever. And so you sort of like, you know, you have to turn that switch and say, all right, I can't be scared of this guy anymore. I got to be in kill mode. You know what I mean? And, and then you just go in there. And like I said, as long as you don't take any shortcuts, you're like, I'm ready. Whatever happens, happens. I know this guy's trained. I know he's, he doesn't want to be embarrassed either. We're just going to go out there and put on a good show. And that's, there's no, there's no easy answer to what you're asking, but that's the way I did it. I just, at first it fueled me because I was scared. You're always scared going into a fight. You're ne- if they say you're not scared, they're lying to you. You're scared going Lying. into you, but you need that energy. But then you have to, you have to turn it at some point and say, it's counterproductive. It's hurting me. I, I already signed. I'm going to fight. So now I just got to really myself and, and start working on myself. And that's, that's the way it worked for me. So. No, well, quick disclaimer, no. real quick before Jay, before you know, a lot of folks will watch this and say, What the hell does that military experience have anything to do with you know the question that he asks? And really, what it what it what it boils down to it is that you know, we're from New York and we don't we don't act like that, we don't think like that. It is what it is, you know, saying we are you know, we think we can beat everybody. You have to put on this tough exterior and you have to have your mindset in a certain you know, your frame of mind to live there and, and to survive there. That's the only reason why I mentioned that. Because I deal with a whole bunch of people from different walks of life, and hearing that just just boggles my mind. I never understood why people would psych themselves out before ever going into something. Really, yeah. so that's part, it. a lot of my partners were ex-military, and I'm telling you, there is a lot of um, similarities. Those guys are tough, man. I mean, you you go through a lot. You kind of have to embrace the being uncomfortable. You got to embrace the suck. You got to embrace knowing not knowing what the future is going to you know bring. That's just yeah. part of it. And you gotta kind of get comfortable with knowing you can't control the out the outcome of what happens. So I, I think that there is a lot of uh, parallel there in just terms of, you know, just learning to deal with sort of the, the nerves and and what what you can't control. So I like what you said. I like what you said about um. Two, I, I like a lot of what you said, but um, relying on your training, right? Like because mm-hmm. it is nerves, right? It is uh, anxiety and emotions. Um, and if you 
dwell in that anxious place when you stand in front of an opponent, you're going to get knocked out, right? If you, fo- if you dwell on getting knocked out, you're going to get knocked out. Um, so if you, if you rely on the training and say, nah, I'm good, I, I, I trained for this, um, you know, and, and you just work through it. I like that, man. Um, also, what I'm taking from it is you're going to train harder if you have a goal, right? Like if, you, um, if you're just going to the gym because you just are going to the gym or you're just working out because you're just working out, um, that workout may not be as intense if it's not goal um, focused. Um, so I definitely uh, took that too, you know. Um, so let's, let, the last question, man. So where, where are you headed, man? What, what are some, usually um, like they get some goals from you, like here, here where your life is heading. Um, any, it could be anything. And then um, we'd like to finish out by having you give um, some advice to um, our workout buddies at home and to us as well, man. Uh, so where, where's, what's, what's your goals, uh, your upcoming goals? What you got going on? Um, so the way I will look at, like I told you before, the thing I learned from all my martial arts experience, especially if you're just kind of naturally competitive, is to learn to compete with yourself. Don't learn to compete with anybody else. It, uh, it becomes a great loop for you because you're always trying to improve, always trying to improve, because you can never beat yourself, right? right. And so what I've been, my goal is I've always been scared to kind of go out on my own and try to do some, you know, more investing on my own rather than just making my, my money through uh, my, my job, which is I've yeah. been, working. And so I've kind of taken the steps now to kind of do that, which has been great. So my goal is to kind of consolidate that. Um, my goal at home is obviously just the same, just to try to make sure, you know, put everything in place for my kids which I think I've kind of done, but just to kind of consolidate everything with them, keep my, my oldest daughter healthy, um, you know, just to live, man, just to try to, I don't want to be like, I don't know, this is probably the wrong way to put it. You know, a lot of our, our older generations, they were sick. They weren't in a place to kind of help people. And I just want to, sure my goal is to make sure in the next 10, 15 years, I'm still healthy, I'm still able. And I can kind of give back to the people that, you know, I care about family members, things like that. Oh, so my, yeah. Just keep positioning myself where I need to be going forward. So, hell, man, hell yeah, man, that, that's awesome. right on. That's spot on, man. That's awesome. Is that, Dave, isn't Takuma right in tune with with PE? Right, like that's why we had to have him on. Look, I, look, I'm telling you, man. Yo, we've been we've been banging out the guests, man. I, I, look, it, it, this has been awesome, man. It's been an awesome experience. I appreciate hell it, yeah. brother. Thank hell you, man. Yeah. Me too. So much love, bro. Thanks for coming on, Takuma. Um, hey, you've been in PE with Dave and Jay. And Takuma. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to send her. I don't want nothing.